Hi, Stu Schwartz from MasterMathMentor.com. This is video BC8. The topic is parametric equations, and it covers the BC manual, pages 41 and 42. In pre-calculus, you studied curves. A curved path is modeled by an equation, y equals f of x. That equation measures the vertical variable as a function of the horizontal variable. So y is dependent on x. When we study motion along a curved path, we sometimes model them by parametric equations. They are in the form of x is equal to f of t and y is equal to g of t where t is a measure of time. Parametric means pair of metrics or measures. So x is a function of t and y is a function of t. So x and y are independent of each other. Let's look at an example. Suppose a golfer strikes a golf ball that is propelled into the air at an angle of 45 degrees. If the initial velocity of the ball is 64 feet per second, it can be shown that the ball will follow the parabolic path given by y equals x minus x squared over 128. This tells us the height of the ball when it is a given distance x away from where it was struck. We see the path of the ball, and from this graph we can get some information. We can see that the ball goes approximately 130 feet and gets approximately 32 feet high. But we have no idea how long this takes. Time is not measured here. We generate the very same curve with the parametric equations x is equal to 32t square root of 2 and y equals 32t square root of 2 minus 16t squared. Since these are functions of t, we can plug in different values of t to determine where the ball is at specific times. At time equals 0, the ball is at the point 0, 0. At time is equal to 1, the ball is at the point 45.25, 29.25. And at time equals 2, the ball is at the point 90.51, 26.51. Time does not show up on the graph. It is invisible, but it is the controlling factor in determining where the ball is. That is why parametric form is so important. So here is the definition of parametric equations. If f and g are continuous functions of t on some interval t1, t2, then the equations x equals f of t and y equals g of t are called parametric equations, where t is called the parameter. The set of points x, y obtained as x varies over that interval t1 through t2 is called the graph of the parametric equations. So if we take the parametric equations and their graph together, it is called a plane curve. When sketching a curve by hand representing par represented by parametric equations, we usually use increasing values of t. So the curve will be traced out in a specific direction. This is called the orientation of the curve. And to show that orientation, we use arrows. So suppose we had the parametric equations x equals t squared minus 1 and y is equal to 3t over 2, where t runs from negative 2 to 3. We first make a table of values of t, x, and y. And t will be integers starting at negative 2 to 3. We then plot the points on the x, y plane. 
notice that the value of t is not visible. Since x of t and y of t are differentiable functions, we can then assume that the plane curve generated by the parametric equations will also be differentiable. So we can connect the points with a curve, remembering to put an orientation arrow at the point 8, 4.5. Number 2 reads x equals 4t squared minus 1 and y equals 3t, where t runs from negative 1 to 1 1.5. Notice that even though the t values are different, the x and y values are exactly the same. But are they really? Remember that a plane curve is made up of both the parametric equations and the graph. Think of t as measured in seconds. In number one, the curve was graphed over five seconds, while in number two, it was graphed over 2.5 seconds. So while the graph appears to be the same, in number two, it was generated in half the time than it was in number one. Think of it as a two runners running along an identical race course. The path that they travel may be exactly the same, but the time that they actually take to complete it can be very, very different. Many times when a parametric equation is given, we wish only to sketch the general shape of the plane curve. In that case, we wish to eliminate the parameter and create a rectangular equation in the form of y equals f of x. The technique to accomplish this is to solve for the parameter in one of the parametric equations. You usually choose the easiest one to do so, and then replace the result in the other equation. So in problems 3, 4, and 5, we wish to generate rectangular equations by eliminating the parameter. In 3, we have x equals t squared plus 3 and y equals 2t. We need to solve for t in one of the equations, and it is easier to do so in the second equation. So t equals y over 2. We go back to the first equation and write x is equal to y over 2 squared plus 3, or x is equal to y squared over 4 plus 3. We will then solve for y and say that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4x minus 12. The rectangular graph, or sometimes called the Cartesian graph, is simply a parabola on its side with vertex at the point 3, 0. However, when we graph this parametrically, realize that t starts at negative infinity and goes to infinity. When t is a small number, x is positive. When t is a small number, y is negative. So this curve starts on the bottom right and comes up to the vertex at 3, 0 and then continues around and goes out to the right. In number 4 we're given x is equal to 1 over the square root of t plus 4 and y is equal to t over t plus 4 with of course t greater than negative 4. We choose the x equation to solve for t. We get the square root of t plus 4 is equal to 1 over x. Squaring both sides, we get t plus 4 equals 1 over x squared, and therefore t is equal to 1 over x squared minus 4. So replacing that in the y equation, we get y equals 1 over x squared minus 4 all over 1 over x squared minus 4 plus 4. We multiply top and bottom by x squared, and we get y is equal to 1 minus 4x squared. 
it's important to realize that x has to be greater than 0. Why? Because in the original equation, x is 1 over a square root, and square roots are always positive. We know that y equals 1 minus 4x squared is a parabola. But since x is greater than 0, we only show the parabola to the right of the y-axis. In terms of orientation, we know that x is always positive, but the first values of y will be negative. So this graph must move up to the left. When t approaches infinity, y will approach 1 by L'Hopital's rule. So technically speaking, this graph never actually gets to the point 0, 1, but becomes infinitely close to it. In number 5, we have x is equal to 5 sine theta and y is equal to 4 cosine theta. Rather than solve for theta, we solve for sine theta and cosine theta. Sine theta is equal to x over 5. Cosine theta is equal to y over 4. We utilize the fact that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1, and therefore we get x squared over 25 plus y squared over 16 is equal to 1. From our study of conics in pre-calculus, we know that x squared over 25 plus y squared over 16 is equal to 1 graphs an ellipse passing through the points plus or minus 5, 0, and 0 plus or minus 4. In terms of orientation, we know that when theta is equal to 0, x equals 0, y is equal to 4. When theta is equal to pi over 2, x is equal to 5, and y is equal to 0. So this must be moving clockwise. Remember that removing the parameter is merely an aid to curve sketching. If the parametric equation represents the path of a moving object, the graph alone is not sufficient to describe the object's motion. It will tell you the path, but you still need the parametric equations to tell you the position, direction, and speed at a given time. We will be covering this in the next video. Sometimes we would like to take a rectangular equation and express it parametrically. It turns out that there is an infinite number of ways to do so. We'll show an example with y is equal to x minus x squared. The easiest way to do this is to let t equal x. So your parametric equations are x is equal to t, and y, which was x minus x squared, is now t minus t squared. As stated, there is an infinite way of representing a rectangular equation as a parametric one. For instance, let's get a little bit more complicated and make our parameter t equal to x minus 3. Therefore, x is equal to t plus 3. And therefore, our equation for y is t plus 3 minus quantity t plus 3 quantity squared. And that turns out to be y equals negative t squared minus 5t minus 6. There is no reason that we have to use the variable t. Let's do this another way. Let's let m equal dy dx. So dy dx is equal to m, but we also know dy dx is equal to 1 minus 2x. Solving for x, we get 1 minus m over 2. We can now replace that in our y equation. So we get y is equal to 1 minus m over 2 minus quantity 1 minus m over 2 quantity squared. 
Putting everything over 4, we get y is equal to 2 minus 2m minus quantity 1 minus 2m plus m squared all over 4, and that becomes 1 minus m squared over 4. You can sketch parametric equations on your calculator by changing the mode to parametric. The x, t, theta, n button will generate a t when in parametric mode. You can specify t min, t max, and t step to control the resolution of the graph. So in the previous example, in, if you graph function mode, y is equal to x minus x squared, and then go to parametric and graph x is equal to 1 minus t all over 2, and y is equal to 1 minus t squared over 4, you will get the same graph. Parametric curves do not have to graph functions in the conventional sense. They can have loops, cusps, vertical tangents, and other peculiar features that could never be graphed in rectangular form. Let's show three neat examples. Our first graph is called a cycloid. Graphed on the interval t runs from 0 to 10. x is equal to t minus 2 sine t, and y is equal to 2 minus 2 cosine t. It should be obvious that this curve is not a function, as some x values have several y values. The points shown on the graph are at equal time intervals, but at not equal distances from each other and that would indicate that the speed of an object traversing this curve is not constant. If you painted a dot on the wheel of a car and the car moved forward, the cycloid is the path that the dot would actually travel. The hypocycloid has parametric equations x is equal to 2 cosine t plus 3 cosine of 2t over 3 and y is equal to 2 sine t minus 3 sine of 2t over 3, for t runs from 0 to 20. The hypocycloid represents a, a point on a circle of radius 3, which is rolling around the inside of a circle of radius 5. Parametrics can create some beautiful graphs, but most of them have a real-life application. The Lysages curve, which has t running from 0 to 2 pi, is used in the theory of harmonics. It is graphed with x is equal to sine of 5t and y is equal to sine of 6t. If you have interest in some of these beautiful mathematical curves, you can check them out on Master Math Mentors ahead of the curve. There's a study of 32 mathematical curves that can be created in rectangular form, parametric form, and later polar form. It is free on the Master Math Mentor website. Next video, BC9, will further our study of parametric equations and see how calculus can be applied to them.